Hi there and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to create this cool fountain simulation using artificial intelligence. ChatGPT is going to write all the code we need and we're just going to watch it work. Let's get started. So to do this process on your own, all you need to do is go to openai.com and create an account where you can use GPT-4. And next, you want to go to blender.org where you can download the 3D modeling program Blender completely for free. You can see downloads and download the latest version onto your computer. So to speed up my workflow going between the two programs, I'll minimize my browser window to the left and have Blender open on the right. This is a function I can do in Windows 11 on my monitor. And I'll drag the center line a bit over and I can see all of my workspace panels over here. When it shows up in the middle, they might be disappearing for you. So drag it over a little bit and we can see a scripting workspace over here in Blender. So we want to open that right away. And it opens a few panels. Really all we need to care about is our text editor here where we can add a new, and now we type in the text. And this is where we would interact with the Blender API and control functions in the program. So now our workspace in Blender is set up for copying and pasting code straight into this text editor. So really why I wanted to make this video is I think it displays how creative ChatGPT has become. Before I've created other videos and I really had to spell out, for example, in this previous conversation, it would place a frame and do the next step, do the next step, and it almost had to do exactly what I said. But now, today, I've been having recent conversations where ChatGPT makes a lot more decisions on its own. And it's really impressive to see it do this. And all we have to do is put in a very vague text description and it does all the hard work for us. Let's see. So in my window over here with ChatGPT, I can type in a prompt in the bottom of the chat. And let's ask for kind of a complex 3D model. So let's say I was designing a game and I needed a fountain spray, like the fountains of Bellagio in Las Vegas, for example. So we can see ChatGPT is starting out strong. It's creating its particle system. And I didn't mention any values or any numbers. So for example, the particle count, particle frame, particles lifetime, these are all created by ChatGPT out of thin air. And ultimately its goal is to create something that looks like the fountains of Bellagio, but we'll see if that's possible. You can see a little description here by Chad at the end. It'll create a particle system that emits from the object and a force field that acts as the fountain spray. And we can see here the fountain's object's location is changed to create the upward motion of the water. So it's trying to create a fountain as it would appear in real life. And you can see the force field location is randomized to create a more natural looking spray effect. ChatGPT would not have done this in previous versions. So we can go up here to the top of this chunk of code and copy the code. And then we can go right into our text editor. And if we click new, now we can type into our text editor so you can either control V to paste or right click paste. And we've got that entire set of script in here that ChatGPT created. And then to run your script, you can do it a few ways. You can go to text, run script, or if you pull your window over, there's a little play button here, or you can even hit alt P to run your script. So we can see it gave us an error on line 15 as use render emitter, but that error doesn't actually affect our 3D model. You can see it successfully created a particle system. I'm going to right click and open up a timeline, create a horizontal split, and change this over to my timeline. So let's see if we scrub through our timeline what this particle simulation looks like. Well, it's not going upwards, that's for sure. It's still going to the negative Z direction. And you can see here that the fountain spray is leaving the vertices of the object here from where it defined the object vertices. So if we select the particles, go into the particle system settings down here, particle system, you can see all of the settings that it created for us. And if we expand the source, emit from vertices, emit from faces, emit from volume. Now let's rerun the simulation with emit from faces. So you can see that's something where it's built into Blender. We can only choose one of these options at a time. And it just chose vertices first. And keep in mind, every time we run this script, it will add a new particle system. If I go up to text and run script again, now it will add another system exactly like we had here on top of that particle system from before. So now there's a little bit more depth to our... Now it almost appears like there's the main spray and some dust. Let's see if we can fix the Z direction in ChatGPT. 
want to try to give it a spelling error and be very vague and see what it can change. And you can see it was only a matter of the gravity in the scene. The gravity was set on default to 9.8. So it's saying if we set the gravity to negative 9.8, then the particles will fly upwards. So it's not a very big change in the code of the particle system, just the, the scene settings. So let's see if it fixed the settings. I'm going to select all the script here and delete it, and then go to this most recent code by ChatGPT, copy it, go into my text editor and paste. I want to make sure to delete that old particle system I had, and then the text, run the script. Let's go back to frame zero on the timeline and let's see. Nope, unfortunately it's still going down. Go down to my field weights in my particle system. I'll turn off gravity all the way down to zero. And now let's see what happens. No, it still wasn't the effect I wanted. Let's go over to our scene and change the gravity settings manually. So you can see it's at negative 9.8 meters a second. Let's change it to positive and see what happens. There we go. So I'm going to run this script one more time. Text run script. And this particle, now there will be two particle systems. The second one I'm going to change to vertices, and this one will be faces. Let's see. I'm going to run the script yet again. There's a third particle system, and I'm going to change this to volume. Now let's see. So I don't know about you, but that looks like a pretty realistic fountain spray to me. I think this fountain exercise is a great example of how creative ChatGPT can be when creating its own settings and trying to recreate something that exists in the real world. It's something that's kind of difficult to do right away in Blender. So now that we use ChatGPT to create this base simulation, let's make it look a lot cooler in Blender. I'm going to go to full screen in Blender and change over my workspace back to my default layout. You can see I've got my timeline down here. I'm going to right click on the header of my timeline and create a horizontal split. This is going to become my shader editor. And here we're going to edit the material of our particles. So our first step into making this look a little cooler is to add a piece of geometry that we can use as the particle. Let's shift A up in our 3D viewport and add a cube. I'm going to G to grab this cube and move it off to the side. And with the cube selected, I'll go down to the little wrench and add a modifier. I'm going to add a best mate modifier. And I might drag the ratio down to something like 0.7. It doesn't have to be exact. We just want to simplify the mesh slightly. Now, if we go back to our particle emitter, which is this cube, we can see it has the three particle systems added. Let's go down to the particle systems, and in each of these, we're going to need to select this particle as the render object. So with particle system selected, go down to render, and it's set to render as halo. We want to render as object. Then we can choose our little eyedropper and select that particle. Now let's go to particle system one, change from halo, object, and select our little particle. Then the last particle system, halo, object, and select it. So you can see if you zoom in now that your object is instanced onto the particles. And we can make this look a lot more dynamic by randomizing the scale and size right underneath render as object. Let's take the scale all the way down to 0.1 and the scale randomness all the way up to 1. And let's do that for each particle system. Select your particle system, scale all the way down, randomness all the way up. Scale down, randomness up. So you can see now those particles appear a lot finer and it's not those large particles rendering anymore. Help your computer out a bit. Now you're done editing your simulation, so you could cache it. You go to each particle system, expand cache, and go to bake. And I'll think through your simulation and go to particle system and bake. And your last particle system and bake. Now your computer will be able to preview it without thinking through the simulation. Now we can use the shader editor to bring in a whole nother level to this. So let's select our particle over here and apply a material to the particle. Go down to your material properties and press new. And we're going to change this surface from principled to emission. So now in our shader editor, we can edit this material. And we're going to be creating an effect where the color changes on the speed of the particle. And for that, we can only use the cycles render engine, unfortunately. So I want to shift A to search for a particle info node. And on this info node, we can grab the location, angular velocity, or velocity of our particles. And that's what I'll be using for this tutorial. So I'll drag off a of velocity and drop and search in color for a color ramp. 
So now the velocity of our particles feeds directly into the factor of our color ramp, and it will change between these two colors as velocity changes. Let's select color over to color and emission. In my emission strength, I'm going to set up to 15. Since we're trying to recreate a fountain, I'm going to select one of these color handles and make it a dark blue color, and this other handle and make it almost white blue. So to see this material effect in action, we need to change our render engine from Eevee over to Cycles, and then go from CPU to GPU compute. And right away, change your viewport samples down to only 50, and maybe your max samples to 500. Then let's go up to Rendered View, and to scrub halfway through your animation. So if we look really closely at our the particles here, we can see that some are dark blue and some are light blue. And that's according to our color ramp here. These particles are moving slower, and the white ones are moving a lot faster. So if you drag the handles of your color ramp, you can see that that blue effect is extended further across the particles. While you're working, you can always go into your material preview instead of your full rendered view. And we could even add another color into this color ramp here. If we press Control and left click, we can add a third color handle and maybe change it to red. Let's go back to rendered view. So you can see there's a third color integrated into the velocity of our particles. So let's say you want to flip which particles are blue and which are white. It's as easy as inverting your color ramp with this little caret drop down, flip color ramp. So now you can see the particles moving slow are white and the particles moving fast are blue. Go back to my material preview. I'm just going to get the scene ready to render. I'm going to add a ground plane so it looks like it's sitting in water. Place it right about the bottom of my sphere. And then the material of this plane, I'll go into the material properties and add new. This I'm going to make look like glass. So I'm just going to turn up the transmission all the way and turn down and turn down the roughness. Maybe turn up the metallic slightly. So now you can start to see the world reflecting, and that's from our HDRI. If you drop down this little carrot up here and click on the HDRI, you can select a different reflection. And you can always change the rotation or the strength of the HDRI. Make sure before you render, you go back to each particle system and turn off the show emitter option. So we'll do this for each particle system. And you need to turn off show emitter in both your viewport display and your render. Now we can look through our camera with a zero on the number pad. And if you press N, you can pull up this sign panel and check camera to view. So now if you press N on the keyboard, you'll collect that side panel. So then when you move, you control the location of your camera with your mouse. So you can see what the final render will look like while you're looking through the camera. For this render, I want to make it a vertical aspect ratio. So I'm going to go to my output properties and change this from 1080 to 1920. 1920 in the Y, so it's a tall rectangular image. And you can see when I zoom out, it's starting to clip. So you can select your camera with this rectangle or up in your collection and go to your camera properties and increase the clip end to 10,000. Now it won't disappear when you zoom out. And you can see that we need that ground plane to be even bigger, so I'm going to scale it up a lot more. And then if you scrub through your timeline, you can see what it'll look like. And I like that location for my camera, so I'll press N and uncheck camera to view. So now my camera will stay right in place. And then you're basically set. You can change the final number of samples to maybe only something like 500 if you're using cycles. Let's go to our output properties and choose where we want to save the file. Then change your file format from PNG to FFmpeg video. And you want to change it from Matroska to MPEG4, so this outputs an MP4 file. And then change your output quality from medium to perceptually lossless. And that's the last step you need to output an MP4 file. All right, that concludes this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to join a community of like-minded artists and creators, be sure to subscribe and you'll never miss out when these videos are released next time. See ya.